Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to the book of Isaiah. This is going to be the continuation of the commentary on Isaiah. This is going to be chapter 41 and verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, verse 1. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Now, people do not understand that when the Lord's speaking about islands, well, Take a look at the map of the Mediterranean. What are all the islands? A lot of them are Greece. What was the New Testament written in what language? Greek. Where did Paul go on his missionary journeys? Uh, what, what churches did he set up? Ephesus, Colossians, Thessalonians. Those are Greek cities in Greece. So when you know when you read, keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength, well, there you go. Now what is England? England gave us the King James Bible. King England's an island. Verse 2, who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings? He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. Huh, the first and the last. Where do we read that in the Bible? Oh, wait, I know. How about Revelation 1? In verse 8, Jesus speaking, I am Alpha and Omega. Do you know what Alpha is? That's where we get the word for alphabet. Alpha was the first letter in the Greek alphabet. Omega was the last letter in the Greek alphabet. Perhaps you've heard the English expression, Oh yeah, they, that company, they cover everything from A to Z. Well, that's the same thing, Alpha and Omega. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. And then in Revelation 1 and verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Greece, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. I believe every single one of those was a church in Greece. Uh, Pergamos, if memory serves me correctly, is in a country that they call Turkey, but uh, Turkey used to be called Greece until those peaceful, loving Ottoman Turk Muslims came and 
invaded and killed all the Greeks, and then they renamed Greece into Turkey in honor of, you know, the Turks. And their capital city, Istanbul, used to be called Constantinople. So, yeah, that's that peace-loving Muslim religion there. All right, Revelation 21, and verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Now keep that in mind. Oh, the water, the fountain of the water of life freely. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Because that comes up again in Isaiah. Revelation 22, 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Let's go back to Isaiah 41. Okay, verse 5. Well, let's go verse 4. Who hath wrought it and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, I the Lord, the first and the last, I am he. The isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. Drew near and came. They helped everyone his brother, and everyone said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, it is ready for the soldering, and he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. Verse 8. But thou Israel, but thou Israel art my servant. But thou Israel art my servant. Jacob whom I have chosen. Did you know that the Lord chooses? Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Boy, I tell you what, I would love to be called the friend of God. Let's take a look at something. Israel is called the servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 6, Jesus said, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. And then in Matthew 15, 24, But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, where does everybody get off saying, you know, God wants to save the whole world through his son, Jesus? Where is that? Uh, I can't find it anywhere. In Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 27. Now remember, Jeremiah is a chapter of judgment upon wickedness of Israel and Judah. And everybody wants to lump Israel and Judah together and then tell you that some little nation over in the Middle East calling themselves by that name is all that can comprises the entire nation. I don't think so, but uh, if they want to believe that, they can. But in Jeremiah 31 verse 27, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel, and the house of Judah. 
If they're the same, why does the Lord make a distinction here? That's a good question to ask your Baptist minister, who will do a song and a tap dance and then uh, change the subject. Chances are. I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that like I have, as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down. All right, to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict. So will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. So, the Lord, in his anger, punishes them, but he's not going to make a full end. He's going to, he's going to build and to plant after he throws down, breaks down, and destroys and afflicts. Verse 29. In those days they shall say no more, The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Verse 31. Very important. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. Now, if you listen to the Hebrew roots people, they'll say, oh, well, God's going to do a renewed covenant. What is that? Uh, you sign a lease for a car for a year, and then at the end of the year, you sign it again, and, you know, no, no. A new covenant is not a renewed covenant. Because if it's a renewed covenant, then that means the you-know-whos need to rebuild the temple and start burning animal sacrifices with blood. That is the renewed covenant. Keeping the Sabbath, uh, you know, burning bulls and goats. Uh, no. No. No, that's why I absolutely think the Hebrew Roots movement is a false bunch of garbage. Because let me tell you something, if the you-know-whos do rebuild their little temple in the Middle East and start doing animal sacrifices, that is an absolute repudiation and denial, a total denial and blasphemy to what Christ did on the cross. And you got a choice. You could either believe in Jesus and what he did on the cross when he said, it is finished, or you can serve the false prophet and the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast. And you can ship over a, a bull and a goat and, and lambs or whatever, sheep, and, and do animal sacrifices. Choice is yours. And you can take the mark of the beast while you're at it. And if you think eternal security is going to save you taking the mark of the beast, you might be in for a hot surprise. What can I tell you? No, there is no renewed covenant. It's a new covenant it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved behold the days come saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, 
which my covenant they break. Who broke the covenant? They did, not the Lord. Which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. What's the marriage supper of the Lamb, people? What is that? In Jeremiah 3 and verse 8, God said that he divorced. He gave Israel a bill of divorce. Let's read it real quick. Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. And given her a bill of divorce, God divorced Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. What's a harlot? A whore. Let's go back to Jeremiah 31 and verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them Unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. And the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, what ordinances? If, if the sun quits giving light and the moon and the stars quit appearing at night, that ordinances. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith the Lord, If heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Gerub, and shall compass about to Goath. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brook, brook of Kidron, unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more forever. See, people, that's what the marriage supper of the Lamb is all about. God divorced Israel with the promise of a new covenant. God was a husband to them. They broke the covenant. But now God's going to make a new covenant and remarry his divorced wife, which was only legal because the husband died. Christ died. So because the husband died, the wife is now free to remarry. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. 
When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because she hath, he hath found some uncleanness in her. In other words, she was uh, running around. Then let him write a bill of divorce and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorce and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land of sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now in Romans 7, 2, For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Well, Christ died. So, now, they're free to remarry. In Revelation 19 and verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Revelation 19, 9. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Okay, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Wow. Remember in Isaiah 3, uh, Re, uh, Jeremiah 3, 8, God divorced Israel. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, he said, a new covenant, not a renewed covenant. Sorry, Hebrew roots, De deceived ones or deceivers. I'm not sure which, maybe both. Verse 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. You know what incensed means? It means they're, they hate you. Behold, all they that were incensed against you, against thee, shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee, shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Who is this Holy One? Well, the book of Mark, chapter 1, and verse 23 tells you, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. So here it is, there's a guy in the synagogue, and he's possessed of a devil, a demon. He's demonically possessed. 
And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Even the devils know who Jesus is, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. How about Acts 31? I'm sorry, Acts chapter 3. Peter had just, well, Peter's performed a miracle. A little back, you know. Well, let's take a look. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Oh, ask an alms. You know, he's, he's a beggar. He can't work. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple and asked an alm, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. You know, look at me. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, not the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, no, no. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was him, and they knew it was he, that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as a lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk. No, it's not us. We didn't do this by our power. We didn't do this by our holiness. Uh-uh. That's the Bob translation. Verse 13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. Pilate was determined to let Christ go. Verse 14. But ye denied the Holy One, but ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas! Remember? Verse 15. And killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith, in his name, what name? Jesus, not Yeshua. And his name through faith, in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. You all. You didn't know Peter was a southerner, huh? And by the way, I was born in Kentucky, so I can, uh, which was considered a southern state, by the way. And now, brethren, I wot 
that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before hath showed by his mouth to all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Huh. Peter said, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet, and it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet, shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Wow. Back to Isaiah 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in, in and shalt, shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Verse 17, Isaiah 41. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Now remember in Revelation 21 and verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. Remember Jesus on the cross said, It is finished? Well, in Revelation 21, 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am, I am, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Huh. Okay. Isaiah 41, verse 17. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the Lord of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittah tree, and the myrtle, and the olive tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things 
what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods, yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye, ye are nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Now remember, without the Lord, we're in big trouble. John 15, 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, for without me, ye can do nothing. Back to Isaiah 41 and verse 24. Behold, ye are nothing, and your work of naught, an abomination is he that chooseth you. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come from the rising of the sun, shall he call upon my name, and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time that we may say, He is righteous, yea, there is none that showeth, yea, there is none that declareth, it, declareth yea, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. Who brought good tidings to Jerusalem? Well, that answer can be found in Luke chapter 2 and verse, starting in verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Back to Isaiah, verse 30, uh, 27. Isaiah 41, 27. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor, that, when I asked of them, could answer a word, Behold, they are all vanity, their works are nothing, their molten images are wind and confusion. See, people, without Christ, we're in big trouble. And everybody wants to worship their own God, whether it's a molten image or their sins. So, all right, well, that's the end of this chapter 41 of Isaiah. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all glory, praise, and honor unto Him. Amen.